Investigating the investigators, Attorney General Bill Barr has critics all fired up after launching a probe into how this whole Trump-Russia investigated started. Something tells me, though, he could care less what his critics have to say. Any attorney general in this period is going to end up losing a lot of political capital, and I realize that. And that's one of the reasons that I ultimately was persuaded that maybe I should take it on, because I, I, I think at my stage in life, it really doesn't make any difference. You're at the end of your career? Or? I, I'm at the end of my career. I've, you know... I, Does it put the, I mean, it's a reputation that you've worked your whole life on, though. Yeah, but everyone dies. Former Republican Congressman and Fox News contributor Trey Gowdy. Trey, uh, what do you make of this? Because, you know, I really... I got to tell you personally, I think Bill Barr has been refreshing, and I feel very confident now as to getting some true closure on all of this. Yeah, he's a serious legal mind trying to do a legal job in an impossible political environment. And I appreciate his willingness to accept this role. Uh, there was another a friend of mine named John Ratcliffe, I think, was up for it. Um, I think most people will take a long, hard look at whether or not they want to subject themselves to, the, number one, the confirmation process, and secondarily, the unmitigated uh, uh, duplicity and hypocrisy that exists in our current political environment. So I'm glad he did it. He's a really, really good lawyer, uh, but 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 he everything that comes out of his mouth is subject to a political analysis, and no lawyer can function in that environment. Uh, but but you hit the nail on the head, right? Because this polarizing political environment we're in is not going to go away anytime soon. And and you know while Bill Barr talks about being at the end of his career, he's at a point right now where he can get something done, and and otherwise. It's, it's just going to be left out there. It's going to be up to interpretation. And even after perhaps the IG's report, his report, everything else, both sides will probably take what they want from this. But I think the American people desperately are seeking closure. Well, I think they are. I think the American people also desperately want a Department of Justice that they have confidence in, even if they may episodically disagree with certain decisions made. He's an institutionalist. He's a DOJ guy from way back. He cares very much about repairing the reputation of that department and the bureau, because he's the boss of the bureau um, in a sense as well. So I'm glad he's there. I, I, I think if given the time um, and the objectivity and an open-minded jury, um, he can get to the bottom of some of these fact patterns. But Charles, half the country at least, and certainly half the Congress, doesn't have any interest in getting to the factual predicate of Russia or or, or, or whether or not the FISA application process was abused. Um, it's an outcome-determinative world. If you don't like Trump, nothing's going to change that. And if you like Trump, nothing's going to change that. So, so if, if, if we find that the origins of this Russia probe were nefarious to begin with, and some of the complaints that have been voiced from day one turn out to be legitimate, uh, then what does that... You're saying that should not have any impact on the way things are? I would, I would suspect it, it, it could, really. That's I, a, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I... I mean, look, look, you've got you got Peter Strzok with a historic level of bias who was leading the Russia investigation and said his real concern was that there was no there there. And if it wouldn't result in impeachment, he wasn't interested. This was the lead FBI agent. And I, I finally I found a cop that Democrats can defend and support. Unfortunately, it was Peter Strzok. Yeah. I could hey. not believe in that hearing. They're defending someone with a historic level of animus and bias. I want to get your reaction to something House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff uh, calling Republicans a bunch of cowards. Listen here. Over time, I've had even senior Republicans will say in hushed tones, keep doing what you're doing. Um, but I'm frankly exhausted by the private misgivings. Uh, people need to speak out. Uh, and I... I think there's been an epidemic of cowardice uh, in the GOP. This president doesn't stand for anything the Republican Party said it stood for. An epidemic of cowardice in the GOP. Trey, your thoughts? Well, let's just get the top line out of the way. I don't know a single Republican that gives a damn what Adam Schiff thinks about him or her or the Republican Party. There are three kinds of Republicans Adam really likes. Those that vote with Democrats, those that lose, and those that die. 
And for most of us, that's too steep a price to pay to curry favor with Adam Schiff. This is the same Adam Schiff that did everything in his power to keep you from finding out that Hillary Clinton had her own server and classified information traversed that server. He did everything he could to make sure you never found that out, Charles. The dossier, you wouldn't know about it if it was up to Adam Schiff. The FISA application and what was used in it, you wouldn't know about it if it was up to Adam Schiff. He went to court to make sure you did not know that the DNC funded Christopher Steele's work, and you wouldn't know about the struck page text if it were up to Adam Schiff. So the king of transparency is one of the most overtly partisan charlatans that I had the pleasure of serving with, right. and that's why there are plenty of Democrats. I do care what they think. Adam Schiff just ain't one of them. Trey Gowdy, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir.